Welcome back to Herbomatic. Today we're going to fix the AC system in this 2006 E450 with the Triton V10. Let's fire her up and see if we can spot the problem. Here's the compressor, the engine's running. Uh, you see like sparks flying off the clutch? Uh, it's not, uh, it's not supposed to do that. So, all right, let's uh, shut her down before she gets too hot and get started. First thing you're gonna need is a mechanics tool set. This one is a Husky from uh, Home Depot. I reviewed it in my last video. Next thing you're gonna need is some R134A. This is, the new cans have this little resealable top. So you're gonna need a new tap to match. See how it talks about the self-sealing valve here. Under the hood of your car, you have a tag that tells you how many ounces of refrigerant you'll need. So take that, divide it by 12, and you'll know how many cans you need. Now you're gonna need some flush and clean. If your compressor burned out like mine did, you're gonna need to flush out all the schmoo that came out of the compressor, metal bits and such. Flush them out of all the components so they don't find their way into the new compressor. You're going to need an AC kit specific to your car. Now this includes the compressor, the accumulator, orifice tube, expansion valve, and the compressor oil. From here over is stuff I rented. Okay, so this doesn't count towards the cost. Rented this from O'Reilly's. You can rent them from AutoZone. Here's a vacuum pump. You're going to need that. Here's what it looks like. Here is a flush kit. And you're gonna need a manifold set. And if you wanna buy one, I think they're 50 bucks at Harbor Freight, something like that. All right, you guys, that should be about everything you need to do your AC. Now the total cost for this stuff over here was 424 bucks. Now I did have to put down a deposit of 258 on this stuff, but I'll get that back when I return it. All right, let's get started. First thing you wanna do anytime you work on a car is disconnect the battery. And when you do disconnect a battery, start on the ground. It's uh, taking a 10 millimeter and it's gonna be this nut here. And we'll just tuck that away from the post. Now, normally that's enough, but this case, our accumulator's over here on the side. So we're gonna get the battery completely out for later. Clamp is loose, push it out of the way. Right here is the battery hold down bolt. It's an eight millimeter. We're gonna loosen that. Pull the block out. Block looks like this, oops. Now the battery should come straight out. Next thing we're gonna do is remove this air cleaner assembly. And another tip guys is buy a truck, not a van. Look at how cramped this is, Jesus. It's our eight millimeter again. Actually, it looks like if I loosen these, I can probably pull this out without completely removing them. So, loosen this clamp, you just flip it up, and then we can pull out this half of the air cleaner assembly. All right, here's our air filter. Pull this cone out. Oh. Hang on. Careful, when you pull these air filters off, it tries to take part of the mass airflow sensor, apparently. Yeah, that's back in there. Careful, just go ahead and take your fingernail and split it right here. These uh, hose clamps are all eight millimeters as well. And then pull this unit forward. Now be careful, this unit here has a plug. Here's the plug. There's a release tab on the back. Let me show you that release tab. It's right here. It's hard to get to. Take your finger, shove it in there sideways, pull that plug out. All right, our next step before we go messing with the AC system is to see if it has a charge in the system. So you hang up your manifold here, and we're going to want to make sure all our knobs are closed. These are closed. See how it says open this way? You want these in the closed position. So turn them all the way out, 
before you do anything. Same thing with this one. You want it in the closed position, so it's gonna be all the way out. On this particular truck, we have the low pressure here and the high pressure here. We just unscrew these plastic caps. All right, to connect these, this is our low pressure one. It's on the smaller nipple. You, all you have to do is pull this ring back and push it on the nipple. So put on the nipple, pull the ring back, push it all the way down, give it a little bit of a nice easy tug to make sure it's on there and you're good. Let's go ahead and hook up our other one, pull back this collar, push it on the larger nipple. And we can start to open these up. Follow the arrow on the open, start with our low pressure side. Wear safety goggles if you're going to mess with any of this stuff. Okay, that one's open. Now let's go ahead and open up our high pressure. Okay, once you have both of these open and you get a reading on your gauge, ideally you have no reading on your gauges, but if you've got something like 110 pounds or any kind of reading at all, you need to go have the system evacuated before you start. You can do the rest yourself, but you cannot vent this stuff to atmosphere. If you were to hold your charge line like this in a safe direction and open up the high pressure line, you'd be venting the atmosphere. But that's illegal to do unless you use it to dust your computer. Because I think it's made out of the same stuff as computer duster. Just kidding, guys. Go, go get it evacuated. First thing when you want to remove the lines from the truck is make sure your charge knobs are closed. We'll take our charge hose, put it right here. Keeps keeps our schmoo out of the lines. First thing we're going to do is close both of these valves, which is counterclockwise. That's closed. And that's closed. Now to release them, you just pull up on the collar, pull them off the nipples, and then they store right on the side of the manifold gauges. Again, it keeps them from getting a bunch of dirt in there. All right, let's look down in the engine compartment and disconnect the accessory drive belt. This belt running along here, and it goes around the compressor at the bottom. The tensioner is right here. It's this mechanism here. And there's a half inch square hole in the back here where you can stick a half inch drive breaker bar to relieve the tension on this pulley and pull the belt off some of the accessories. Here's the breaker bar I'm talking about. Go ahead and stick that in there. It's a half inch drive. And the quarters are too tight for this breaker bar. All right, well that breaker bar didn't fit down next to the fan. So I went down and rented another tool. This is a serpentine belt tool, rented at O'Reilly's. 35 bucks, you get your money back when you return it. All right, here's the half inch drive. That's what we need. And this will plug into the end of it as leverage. It's a three inch drive. Let's go ahead and send down our half inch adapter. There we go. Now let's stick in our leverage bar. Now let's go ahead and relieve the belt tension. And as we relieve the belt tension here, I'll pull the belt off the alternator. Don't put your finger between the belt and the alternator. Okay, we'll release the tensioner pulley. All right, you guys, come with me under here. And we run into our first obstacle, which is this plastic shroud that runs under the truck. And they're retained by these panel clips here. Okay, they make special panel clip pliers. Oh, I don't have them. You can put a flathead underneath the center part here and pop that center part out. And if one doesn't work, 
grab yourself another flathead. Once you've got that center part out, the clip will come out. Let me show you it. So, the center part goes in and spreads the clip out. The shroud is retained by three of these. Let's look for the other ones. The other one is up under here. I'm having a hard time showing it to you. Let me see if I can get it. You can see it there. And then back a little further, the other one is right there. So remove those three things. Okay, shrouds out. Didn't break any clips. Now one of the things I like to do is lay out all my parts in an area separate from everything else. That way, as I start to put the car back together, when I'm out of parts, I'm all done. Another little tip is wear safety glasses when you go under there because every rock and noise you heard while driving the vehicle, all those little things are gonna go straight into your friggin' eye. Okay, we're under the car here. Here is the belt around the air compressor, the air conditioning compressor. We can remove that belt now because we uh, loosened it up top earlier. Now, if we look, there's a bolt there. It is 13 millimeter. There's the other bolt there. You can see it in the middle of the screen. And then if we go behind this I beam here, there's our third bolt. I'll remove that one with a, an extension and a ratchet, and I'll remove these two with an open end, I mean a box end wrench. All right, we got the front bolts out of the compressor, as well as this back one that was in the cubby hole. You had to slide the compressor forward to drop these two out of the way of the cross member to get them completely out. And now I need to make more room to drop the compressor. So the next thing we're gonna do is remove this steering stabilizer that goes to here. Both bolts are 18 millimeter. And on this side here, you're going to need a wrench to back it up, also 18 millimeter. Then after that, we'll remove this bracket. Those are 13 millimeter, and it's got two more bolts right there, also 13 millimeter. In order to remove this type of fan here, you need to hold this hub steady while loosening this giant nut right here. And they make a special tool that slides over these nuts like a big wrench over all four of them and holds the hub steady so you can loosen this. And it's a big flat, it's a big flat wrench. It slides over these bolts and holds that hub steady. I don't own it and I don't feel like running down and spending any more money right now. So let's see if we can make our own. All right, here's our new wrench. 
All right, I uh, founded my thing a one and seven eighths wrench to go on the fan clutch, and we've got our new our new uh, specialized tool to hold the hub. Alright, we got it. There she is, all loosened up. Okay, get my wrench off. Okay, now that we got the fan clutch disconnected, we can remove this fan shroud. We're gonna have to remove this top radiator hose to get the shroud out the top. The other thing we'll remove is this little elbow. The uh, bolts on the fan shroud are 8mm. We use our little quarter inch drive. The socket for the little uh, clamps on the induction elbow here is 7mm. Uh, Now, we got to remove this top radiator hose. They make a special pair of pliers for that, but I've always just used channel locks. Cool. The damn clamp broke. I didn't even put any force on it, really. I've never had one of these spring clamps break on me. Take this hose, push it back over here. Just notice this clip here. There's a hose here attached to this clip. So we're just gonna pull the hose out of the clip, spread it only as much as you need to. Plastic becomes brittle out here. There's no clips on this side. We got the fan out. Let's go underneath and see what's hanging up this uh, fan shroud. Right here, this clip is attached to the fan shroud. Look at all that room you got now. All right, we're looking at the, we're under the vehicle now. We're looking up at the compressor and we can see that there's a plug right here, right in the center of the screen. And it goes to what appears to be a knock sensor. And that somebody has zip tied it around the bottom of the compressor over to here. And then we also have the plug right in the middle there of your screen is the plug to the clutch. So I'm going to disconnect the wires, cut this zip tie, okay. Be gentle with all these stupid plugs because you'll just increase your your time of repair by enormous amounts if you go breaking all this stuff. Tell you what, when you work on these cars, the next day your abs will be killing you because you're crawling in and out and in and out from underneath the car. All right, here's that clutch harness. Yeah, it's just got a little button. Okay, got that plug off. Okay, 
looks like there's a zip tie on the refrigerant line holding that wire that went over to our knock sensor. So let's cut that. Okay, that's cut. Our harness is free of that. Pushing up and forward on the compressor. Okay, so we've got the compressor forward and we can see this bolt right here is what holds the refrigerant lines on. Now we have access to that bolt. We can release the refrigerant lines and then we should be able to pull the compressor straight out the top. Okay. Bumped my radiator a little bit. Don't do that to your radiator. All right, we got our compressor in hand. Let's take it on out of there. And let's check our clutch. That's what was throwing sparks earlier. Look at the discoloration and everything. All right, the next step in our AC Quest is to remove the dryer accumulator. Just tucked over here on the left of the battery box. This battery box doesn't look too hard to remove, so we're gonna get it out of the way. Let's try 13 millimeter. That's it. And we got a better view of our dryer accumulator. Now, some of this here is framed, so there's not much we can do. This thing is just chilling out in there without being hooked up to anything. So we'll just pull this tube off. We'll set that aside. So let's disconnect this plug here to the accumulator. And that one was a pull up on the tab to release. That's your pressure sensor. So if the system's low on coolant, I mean on refrigerant, it won't run the compressor. Okay, that's out of the way. Then there's a ground wire going to this stud right here. The second part here, which looks like a stud, is uh, 11 millimeter to get that harness for the accumulator out of the way. So here's that stud. Okay, this harness now can be fished up out of the way. All right, the accumulator has two bolts holding it in off this little ear over here. It looks like they're eight millimeter. So that bottom one is down in this hole, you see it? And they gotta use a rusty bolt. All right, the accumulator's unbolted. Now we just need to disconnect the lines. Actually, I just found this mounting nut on the accumulator line. So we'll take that off next. Looks like it's also eight millimeter. The next thing we're gonna go after is this coupling. All right, you're gonna need yourself a couple of large croissant wrenches. And get them on here. why I wanted to disconnect it from the plastic box here before I went crazy on it so I didn't want the force to snap in that thing back this fitting out and we'll be sure to change these o-rings the next coupling is this one here let's remove these two nuts and move this washer fluid filler neck out of the way probably gonna be the old eight millimeter yep Those are out of the way. Now we can move this filler neck. 
out of the way. it gets some condensation because it gets cold and water has crept down on the threads and caused some corrosion that's why it was so damn tight so what I'll have to do here is before I go breaking the seal the pieces are still together is let me go grab a small brush will knock as much rust out of the way I've got this nylon brush let's go ahead and knock as much goop out of here as possible Go ahead and pull the accumulator out of there. Okay, got it. Now I want to take a clean paper towel and do my best to cover that hole because it's facing upwards and I don't want crap getting into my uh, evaporator. All right, I've got the accumulator all undone. Let's see if we can pull it out. Accumulator. Let's grab our new one. And immediately you see we have a problem. The top hose, this one here, is fine. These ones are completely different. Friggin' auto parts guy. Alright, back to the auto parts store, got the right parts. Now let's remove the orifice tube. Now the orifice tube in these E-series vans located right above the evaporator which is this box right here first thing we got to do is remove this screw and it's eight millimeters so you grab your croissant wrenches break the seal And we know the orifice tube should be on this side right here. See these crimps right here? These are designed to stop the orifice tube from sliding down the line. Let's go ahead and pull this side out. We can see it. There's a little black tab sticking right there. Here's a, here's a brand new one. So the black tab that's showing is this part right here. It goes in that way. Now, they make a special tool that grabs these two little ears. See the ear on either side? I don't have that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a pair of needle nose. I'm going to grab it by this flat part of the black. And I'm going to pull straight out. Not going to twist or anything like that. Move this other tube out of the way. In order to pull the orifice tube out, we're going to use these pair of pliers with pretty decent grip. But in order to have a straighter shot, what we're going to do is remove this 8mm bolt that holds the uh, oil fill tube. Let that bolt out. Put that in our gutter. And we can move that just a little bit. Move everything to try to get the straightest shot possible. And let's pull it straight out. Bad news. Look at the metallic particles. That compressor must have failed spectacularly. Okay, the only thing holding the lines in that go to the compressor is this little plug here on the sensor and this coupling up here. Now we can see that the uh, high pressure here is pointed straight up, so remember that. And we'll loosen this coupling, remove this connection, 
and we can pull out that whole assembly for flushing. So we'll lift that little tab here and push the plug back. And we'll use our croissant wrenches on these. Make sure they're super tight against the flats of the coupling. Now we'll gently separate this. Then we can just pull out this hose assembly that went to the compressor. All right, before we flush the system, we do have this one length of hose here. So all I gotta do, all that's left here, is this coupling right here. Okay. And we got our little hose out. Okay guys, because we found so much metal in the orifice tube, I went and bought a condenser. The condenser is the first item after the compressor. And if you look at these little, these little uh, tubes here that go side to side, you're never gonna get all that metal out of there. There's a million tubes. So this was 125 bucks from Advanced Auto Parts. It's not worth risking all the work. You know, you'll never flush it all out. So anyhow, let's go remove the condenser. These are lines to the condenser. We disconnected those earlier. Here's a bracket holding in the radiator. The condenser's under this piece of plastic here. Here's the other radiator bracket. And uh, we have this plastic shroud that's in the way. So let's start removing all that stuff. This is held on with these type of body clips that unscrew. This is uh, what they look like. They're Phillips head. You unscrew them a bunch and then you can just pull them out. It looks like it's brackets under the radiator mount. So we've got to remove these bolt, this bolt here, and there's another one just like it on the side. Now, if you've been following along, you probably guess what size it is. If you guessed 10 millimeter, you'd be right. These are the brackets to hold the condenser in place. And these bolts are, that's right, 10 millimeter. All right, with those brackets removed, we should be able to lift the condenser right out. Okay. All right, this also gives us a chance to clean out any kind of paper that's accumulated in here. Like this. All right, we finally stopped uh, disassembling the vehicle. We got it all done. Let's take a look at how far it went. All right, let's slide in our new condenser right in the place of the old one. Make sure that the bottom of the condenser sits in the same little mounts that the old one came out of. There's little square mounts in the bottom. Okay, now it's down in the blocks. 
Looks like it fits in place pretty good. Let's start putting on our brackets back. Okay. Now the ends of the condenser have these little square tips. And at the bottom and the top, you've got these rubber squares or these little rubber rectangles. And those fit over, they fit over that square piece to secure the condenser. Now, if you're not sure exactly how to line up the bracket, you'll get these little dirt lines from where the bracket sat, you'll get a clean spot. Just line it back up in that little clean spot and you'll be pretty damn close. With these brackets, you have a donut here. It's a rubber donut. That goes down on top of this nipple on the radiator. Same on both sides. And we'll use the same body clips that we did before. Now, you don't have to screw them back in. When you put them in, you can just push the middle part in. Remember when you design all this stuff, it's designed for quick assembly. Okay, radiator and uh, condenser are reinstalled. All right, while well, we have it all disassembled, this strikes me as a good time while we have that difficult to remove fan off to change the accessory belt and the tensioner. So usually when you change the belt, you change the tensioner. Let's take a look at this belt. Actually, it doesn't look all that old. I have a new belt for it, so we'll put one on. And if I had more time before this truck went back into service, I would change this water pump. I'd pull this pulley off and change that water pump. But this truck's gotta get back in service tomorrow. All right, so let's remove this idler, or this tensioner pulley here. It's got three bolts, one right here, here, and here. Now, if you wanna know what size they are, you guessed it, that's right, 10 millimeter. This is more of a job for a 3 8 ratchet. I'm using the quarter, but probably about the most pressure you'd want to put on the quarter. When you're relieving belt tension, this is where you stick your half inch drive in. Now we'll wait to reinstall that until we have our air conditioning compressor reinstalled because that actually frees up a little bit of room. Okay, let's talk about flushing your AC system. I rented this one, but it's brand new, so we'll have to uh, break it in. Oh, we're the first ones to ever touch her. Hmm, chemicals. So get your compressor nozzle, just wrap it in Teflon. What do you guys think? Are you guys three wrappers, four wrappers, five wrappers? Let's see, I'll go around until I get bored. Nine sixteenths wrench. Okay, that's installed. That's looking pretty good. Let's open up the bottle. Okay, here's some uh, instructions 
Okay, it happens to be that one quart is 32 ounces, so we're all set. All right, let's screw our cap back on. All right, first thing you're gonna wanna do is get yourself some safety glasses. This is beyond squint territory. You don't want this stuff getting in your eye. It's gonna be bits of metal and refrigeration uh, oil. It's not gonna be good. All right, now this is the evaporator. We're going to, this is the inlet. This is where the orifice tube was. It took it out already. And uh, this is the outlet. So we're gonna add air into the outlet and reverse flush it. See if anything comes out this side. Okay, and let's connect our little flush unit here. So we're gonna do is make sure this valve is off, perpendicular. Like this. Now we can turn our valve on, pressurize the tank, make sure this tip is clean, don't want any dirt getting injected into the system. Now let's go ahead and blow it out. Okay, I should have put a rag over here. That's a huge mistake. I don't know what I was thinking. It's been a long day. Okay, pretty happy with that amount of flush. Now I'm going to Okay, here's a quick tip I just figured out. When you go to uh when you go to disconnect this, before you disconnect it, close this valve or all that air pressure comes back and blasts you in the face. So that's pretty horrible. So anyways, remember to close this red valve before you disconnect your air hose. We're gonna have a spotless engine compartment after this. Okay, now we're gonna hook our air gun back up. If you get a little bit in your engine compartment, if you tap it in the world, it dries pretty fast with some press air. So you're going to want to flush everything you're keeping. I'm going to be keeping these hoses in this manifold that goes to the compressor. What we're going to do first is I'm going to cl clean the outside of these real good. I'm going to add air, blow as much out as I can with air, and then I'm going to take my flush fluid, put it in there, blow it till it's almost clear coming out, and then uh, add air again until it's uh, dry. And you're going to do that with every component you're keeping. We won't do it with the dryer accumulator. You should replace that every time you replace the compressor. Let's go look at, especially mine since it had a since it had a meltdown. Now you can do that same thing with this evaporator. You'll add air until everything comes out, then flush fluid, and then air again. And you're going to want to go both ways with the air until everything comes out. Now I'm not reusing this because I had a catastrophic failure, and this is the component right after the compressor. So this is full metal shavings. I'll never get cleaned out. All right. We've gotten the loose stuff away from the ports. Let's go ahead and uh, flush it. First thing we're gonna do is take a little air, blow everything away from the compressor. Okay, so then we'll just take a little bit of flushing fluid, put it in each hole. So it comes out pretty clear. That looks pretty clear to me. And we're going to blow this stuff out. And the final piece I'm going to keep here is this little tube. So we'll do the same procedure on that. All right, I've run into a little snag here. As you see, the old compressor has these uh, roll pins here and here, and the new one does not. It's the exact same compressor. Except for it doesn't, it's got the holes milled for it, and there's a lip in there, but doesn't have the roll pins. So we've got to try to get the roll pins out of this compressor. 
All right, I've got this hammer and this old uh, file. Let's see if we can't knock those out. Okay, we got one out, so that's gonna work fine. So all these are our chamfered roll pins to uh, help locate it against the engine block. So we got one out. Okay, the other one came way out, or came out way easier. Okay, so we got those out. Now we gotta install them in the new one. Oh, I tilted the damn compressor and the frickin' nuclear waste came out. All right. Now, you can install the roll pins on the wrong side. You see how they're chamfered for roll pins? So don't do that. Now, it was on the left side of the engine, so we're gonna put them on the right side of the compressor. All right, now we're just gonna gently push our roll pins in there. All right, we'll just use the uh, side of this old file to cushion this so we don't damage anything. That one's in. And that one's in. So that's it. All right, next we're gonna work on reinstalling the compressor. But first we have to add oil to the compressor. And we can find out how much oil we need right off this tag. I don't have a rear AC, so you can see here, it's nine ounces of oil. We've got to add oil to the new compressor. Let's move the old one out of the way. But first we need to figure out how much oil is already in it. Let's go ahead and remove this cap. The kit I bought came with eight ounces of uh, oil. System calls for nine. Let's hope that there's at least an ounce in here. Jesus. Should have been wearing safety goggles. And we're going to dump the oil into this little container here. Make sure your containers are clean. Okay, I'm dumping the oil and I'm turning the center part of the compressor, which is... And let's see how much was in the compressor. Looks like there's about four ounces in the compressor. It is pour this into here until we were at nine ounces, which is what the system calls for. All right, probably doesn't have to be this perfect. There we go, nine ounces of oil. We're gonna add that into our suction port, which is the larger, this compressor is not labeled. Sometimes there's an S, this one's not labeled, but it's usually the larger port. All right, I got my safety glasses on. You don't wanna take any of this juice to the eye. <laughs> that's what she said. Yep, that's the suction side. I turned the compressor clockwise, put my thumb over the hole and it sucked on my thumb. So let's go ahead and add it. Turn it a little bit. Let's add a little bit more. Let's turn it. We'll add some more. Okay, that's how you add the exact amount of oil to your compressor. You got to empty out what's in there. Measure the exact amount the system calls for and if you've replaced all the components and flushed the rest like i have you need the full load right there if uh, you've replaced just a few components you'll have to figure out how much oil was in the components you removed and add that back to the system all right let's change out these o-rings uh, these are black o-rings and they came with these new ones which are the green type which is the ac type just gonna use this pick to remove them gently. Don't scratch the aluminum. We got our new AC rated ones. Go 
push those down in there. Okay, make sure these mating surfaces are really clean, especially where the O-ring goes. Don't wipe anything into the holes. Wipe away from the hole, guys. Come on. Watch out for these lips right here. You see these little guiding lips? If you bolt it on the compressor crooked, you'll crush this, you'll ruin the compressor, and you'll ruin this manifold. What we're going to do is we're going to line it up over the holes, and then we're just going to let it find its home. It feels good. It's locked in. Now we're going to add our factory bolt here. We're going to hand tighten. And then we're going to look on the edge. We're going to check on this edge here and make sure they're seated down in there. We could even gently turn it back and forth, make sure it's locked into place, and it is. So now we can torque it to spec. This is the torque wrench. I'm going to set it to 17 foot pounds. I'm going to lock the bottom. And uh, we'll go ahead and tighten her up. She's 10 millimeter. All right, we're going to try to reach our torque limit while being smooth. There it is. Hear that click? You're good. All right, let's tape up the end of these compressor lines so that no schmoo gets in the lines while we're installing the compressor. We use some of this blue tape. All right, let's get ready to install the compressor. What we're going to do here is remove this is that wire that went to that knock sensor and this is the one that goes to the compressor clutch let's move them out of the way and just lower our compressor assembly down in there Okay, now we'll have to go under there and get dirty. All right, before you go under the car, get yourself a few things. Safety glasses so you don't get a bunch of dirt in your eye. Flashlight so you can see what you're doing. The three bolts for the compressor, make sure the threads are clean. A half inch or 13 millimeter wrench. 13 millimeter half inch are close enough. I've got a 13 millimeter socket here on an extension for your 3H drive. Sorry about the leaf blower, guys. These uh, these landscapers around here at these apartment complexes, it's like they, they're obsessed with them. They love revving them up all over the goddamn place. Okay, another thing is, before you get the compressor into place, you're gonna have to put the first two bolts in the front. You're gonna have to get them in the slots because you won't have room to do it once the compressor's plugged into place. So I'm pulling the compressor forward just an inch or so, I'm gonna put the bolts in their spots. And then it's gonna be precarious, but I'm gonna to have to hold them in place. God, these leaf blower guys, it's, some of them act like some of the, motor, the obnoxious motorcycle riders that, that like have to rev their stuff to make sure you're looking at them. Cause you hear them go wah, 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 like that. And that's, I don't know, you've gotta like intimidate the leaves or what? Okay, right. we got the fr first, the front two started. Let's get the back one started. Okay, now I'm pushing the compressor up against the frame and I'm letting those uh, roll pins slide into their little locating holes. Now I'm threading the bolts in by hand as much as possible. Make sure we don't get any cross threads. Okay, here we are under the car and I've got it all mounted up. But you see these two bolts here? Before you do anything, while you have the compressor pulled out to about, pull the compressor out to here, put those two bolts into bosses. They're so long, you'll never get them in with these frame rails and this frame rail in the way. Don't worry about the back one, you can put that in through a hole. Okay, so once you get all the bolts started, wiggle the compressor and make sure, do you see right here? That's flush against the engine. And I didn't do that with screw pressure. They're still finger loose. And then up here, again, see that boss up there? It's up flush against the engine. Don't do any of that by force. Wiggle the compressor around, slowly tighten up all three bolts by hand until you're up against there, okay? Now let's take a look at the back one. 
see the back one's in there? You can start that one after the compressor's already kind of in there. You could, you could just put it right through that hole. They made it nice for you. The torque spec on these bolts is 20 foot pounds, but I can't get a torque wrench in there. So we're gonna tighten them to German standards. Good and tight. Okay, use your box end whenever possible. Try not to use your open end unless you absolutely have to. And don't use it to torque anything down. Don't go crazy on these. Remember, they're bolted in to an aluminum block. And remember, the torque spec torque spec's 20 foot-pounds on these bolts. And you figured that I've got about 8 inches of leverage with this. So I should only be pushing with like 30 pounds of force. Pressure's all bolted in. Looks good. Isn't that a beautiful sight to see? What a happy little compressor. Remember, there's no mistakes in life. Just happy little compressors. All right, let's reach down and uh, grab that wiring harness that we had tucked out of the way earlier. Probably ran behind these refrigerant lines. Okay, gently push it on until you hear a click. Be very careful that you don't snap this plastic piece coming out from the compressor uh, clutch. I'll have to go downstairs and plug in that knock sensor. Okay, I've got that wire routed and plugged into our, what I assume is a knock sensor. It's routed behind these bolts and there's no way for it to come forward and get into the belt system. So I put the single zip tie just to be sure, but I don't think that was even necessary. Okay, so compressor is completely installed on the bottom here. Okay, I want to put the tensioner on, but the bolts are got corrosion on them. So let's go ahead and uh, clean them off. Take your bench grinder with the wire wheel, and if you have to do it by hand, clamp them in your vise and hit them with a wire brush. All right, they don't have to be perfect, but these are a hell of a lot better than they were. All right, I've got a brand new tensioner and a brand new belt. Here's the package for the belt. Here's the package for the tensioner. And if you forget how to route your belt, it should be right there on the front of the engine. Okay, we're gonna hand start all our bolts. They are a 10 millimeter socket. And I wanna leave them loose and pull the tensioner out to help with routing. Every time you get it on some stuff, it seems to like flop off of everything else. And pull the tensioner out of the way. Pull my little loop up over my tensioner. Okay, we got it over everything except for the alternator. Let's go ahead and tighten up our tensioner. See, when you clean your threads, you can do so much more hand tightening. You're less likely to gouge the, uh, or gall the aluminum threads in the engine. Make sure we're not crushing the belt anywhere. All right, let's torque these 10 millimeter bolts around the tensioner to 20 foot pounds. In fact, with all this luxurious space, we can just stick this uh, the standard pry bar or the standard um, breaker bar in here. It looks like the easiest way would be to do your water pump last. It's got this nice smooth pulley, and it's got this nice chamfered edge on it. For a nice rounded edge. So let's do this again. That was a lot easier than doing the alternator. So put it on everything except for the water pump. Do your water pump last. All right, the belt's on. We'll move on to the next project. Let me double check, make sure it's, it's in all the right grooves. 
All right, we'll start with the fan shroud. Let's see what we're hanging up on. You're gonna have to kind of push hoses out of the way and stuff as you guide it down there. You keep the fan shroud from scraping along the radiator and bending all your fins. was that now we got to lean it back as far as we can to accept the radiator fan Be as gentle as you can okay we got it past the worst part now we're gonna reach in there and try to get the fan started on the hub Then start threading it on the hub. It's just clockwise, ready tidy, pretty normal. Once you've got it started a few revolutions, we can start to put the shroud in place. Move the shroud forward. Make sure nothing gets trapped between the shroud and the radiator. Look, look all around, take your time. All right, the bottom of the shroud has two, two little tabs that slide into little tabs on the radiator. Go under there, make sure they're slid in. I'll show you in a little bit. Okay, we'll get our bolts started for the shroud. Okay, use your uh, quarter inch ratchet. Don't go too crazy on these bolts. Everything is just screwed to plastic. Okay, you see this right in the middle of your screen? This is the tab from the shroud and it slid into the square notch on the radiator. Just what you need to check for before you go tightening down your shroud. Now we come over here and you have the same thing on this side. There's our fan clutch. You can turn it on. The clutch will try to slip a little bit. It's no big deal. Turn it on as much by hand as we can. Okay, that's as far as we can go. We'll give it a little bit more. Okay, we're starting to get slippage on the belt. This tool is an inch and seven eighths. You can rent these for free from the auto parts store. But I'm gonna use our homemade wrench we made earlier. Hold that against the four bolts. And we're just gonna tighten her on a bit more. Now, you don't have to go too crazy tightening this because the engine turns in such a way that it wants to tighten the fan. The resistance of the fan tries to tighten it the whole time. Okay, that's tight. Okay, on our fan install, there's a couple of little details we gotta finish up here. There's this clip that this hose slides into. We try to be as gentle as possible. Don't kick yourself if some of this plastic breaks. You'll have to make up for it with zip ties. Yeah, so I'll just throw a zip tie around these two hoses. Zip ties weren't long enough, so I've got to do that whole zip tie ninja work here. Now, the goal with these zip ties isn't to pinch the hoses or anything. It's just to hold them from abrading against anything sharp while the engine's vibrating. Okay, under here, is this little clamp that we undid earlier that holds the this radiator hose. Here's the other part of it. The fact that there is another part means I made a mistake. As I was put, sliding the shroud down, this little clip must have got caught on the hose and snapped. Do a little zip tie ninja work here. Stick zip tie through here. I've gone through the remaining hole. Now I'm just gonna go around this hose nice and gentle. All right, let's change our orifice tube. We got the new one here. So 
it goes in the tube white in first you could tell because there's a little arrow cast into the white plastic is we have a little bit of compressor oil and a twisted up paper towel don't use a q-tip they're too fibrous and we're just going to lubricate the o-rings on this so it slides in the tube nice and easy stick the orifice tube in there Okay, I felt it bottom out and it bottoms out with the end of the orifice tube about flush with this tube maybe it sticks out just a little bit don't go too crazy with that okay next we're going to install the hose that closes up the orifice tube we've lubricated the o-ring same thing Before we tighten that connection with wrenches, let's get the other end started. Okay, the connection we're looking for is this bottom one right here. Okay, it's got a brand new O-ring there because um, it enters new. So let's lubricate that O-ring. Hold your tubes as straight as possible while you start this nut. We'll grab our croissant wrenches here. Yeah, it's tight. Okay, that's tight and we got our little mounting nut here it goes on with an eight millimeter all right the next hose we're going to connect up is this one here here it is let's check on our o-ring there's a nice new o-ring there Go ahead and lubricate it. Take off our protective tape. Line up our tubes as straight as possible. Slide our nut on. Okay, it's tight. Now the system's all closed up except for our dryer, which we installed last on purpose. We don't want to expose the dryer to moisture till the very end. Let's do that next. All right, here we are with our second dryer again, retrying it. This is the advanced auto parts one. And I had to tweak this tube so it would clear this fender. And that was the issue I was having. And I cut one of these open and it won't affect its performance. I cut open the original one to see if bending this tube down would affect anything, and it won't. And I'll make a video about what's inside there later. So, all right, so first thing we're gonna do is just go back and hook this side up. Put a little compressor oil on this O-ring. Got a very stiff hose. So I'm going to make this connection before I bolt down the unit. It's on there nice and square. Start this nut by hand. When they rebuild these dryers, they reuse these coupling nuts and stuff. And so sometimes there'll be a few little hitches in your, when you go to tighten it up. So that's why I can't completely tighten this one by hand. But I'm not using very much force. It is going on fairly easily. There we go. Okay, we're not gonna snug it up very much because we don't have our backer wrench on there. Now let's uh, 
go ahead and mount this side up. I don't get this wire routed wrong. Bring it under here. This. Bring that out of the way. Okay, we got our first mounting hole lined up. Just stick a bolt in here. Stick our second one over here. Before I tighten anything, I just want to make sure I'm not crushing anything. I want to make sure my routing's okay. It's looking pretty good. Now, before we go too crazy, let's make sure this side's okay. On the last unit, it was defective. Let's make sure that this is okay. Okay, the mounting holes line up close enough over here. So I think we're good, finally. These are both eight millimeter units mounted up. Now we need to put in the little pressure switch that was here. I'm just gonna dab some refrigerant oil on this ring here, this O-ring. Let's grab our sensor. This is only hand tight. It's plastic here, so don't go crazy. Okay, let's bring our harness over. Okay, while we're over here, let's connect our uh, chassis ground. That comes from the uh, negative battery terminal. Eleven millimeter socket. Then our little harness ground that was here. Ten millimeter socket. Okay, that's done. Let's connect the other side of the dryer to the system. I'll dab it with a little bit of refrigerant oil. Release the seal on the um, dryer. that in there. Try, oops. Try to get these as straight as possible so I don't have any strain on anything. I'll we'll start it by hand. While that coupling's still loose, just hand tight, I'm going to put this uh, bolt through there. You want to force anything too much. You want to kind of just work with everything as much as you can. Take pictures of everything before you take it apart. All right, now we can tighten this line and let's not forget our other accumulator line. Okay, we get out our croissant wrenches again. Put one to back the line so it doesn't try to twist as I tighten this one. And go ahead and tighten this up. Okay, that's snug. Need the biggest croissants on this one. Just make sure our lines are feeling pretty natural. Everything feels, nothing feels strained. It's in its natural rotation because it's not tight. I haven't forced anything. And now let's tighten it up. Okay. That's tight. Okay, the refrigeration system should be resealed now. Let's reinstall the top radiator hose. As you recall, the spring clamp broke upon trying to remove it. So I got a couple of these generic looking things. We'll just stick one of these on there. This isn't quite the right size, but it's what I already had on hand. And I just gotta get this truck done. So we'll stick, we'll just connect this back up. Get the eight millimeter ratchet. Okay, it's connected. Just come over here and let's not forget to hook this wire back up. We have it tucked. We have it tucked out of the way. Looks like it ran over here. Okay, some of the small buttoning up we can do is putting the windshield washer uh, fill neck back on. Let me wipe off the dirt here. Our hose is tucked out of the way. We'll run it back to where it goes. Let's see where it goes. It's about right there. That looks pretty good. 
Now this thing isn't really staying in there very good. Okay, let's pop a zip tie around it. And then it goes on with these two bolts that we took off earlier. And they're just eight millimeter. Don't go crazy tight on these at all. Choke up on the handle, just two fingers. That's it, guys. Next, let's reinstall our oil filler. And can you guess the bolt size? That's right, it's eight millimeter. Okay, let's put our induction boot back on. Little elbow. And can you guess the size? Nope, seven millimeter for some reason. Unlike any other hose clamp ever. Don't go, don't go crazy at all on those. Just barely tight. Mass air sensor. First thing we'll do is we'll plug this back in. Before we forget it. That's done. This back on. Shove it under these two grommets here. Wiggle it so that it gets under there. Okay, these are the bolts that were that we took out at the very beginning of the project. Two of them. And these are all eight millimeter. So, just enough to where you see the rubber flex a little bit. While we have the 8mm on the ratchet, let's go ahead and tighten this clamp. So next you're going to want to dust off or replace your air filter. Mine's still sort of got some life in it, so keep it. Now this clamp here, you're going to have to fight with it a little bit. What I find the best thing to do is kind of force it open wider than it wants to be. Rotate this notch so it lines up in this little cutout. I don't know if you guys can see that. Now grab your clamp and start to kind of rotate it back and forth until it settles into a spot. There it is. That's fastened. Actually, let me loosen that for just a second. Gonna loosen it part way, get this part pushed in, and we'll tighten that clamp back up. Production system's back together. Okay, there was a, if you guys recall, there was a carbon filter that was tucked down in here. Now, when I found it, this wasn't mounted to anything. It was just stuck down in here. So I just push the tube back on the nipple, and let it chill down there. Kind of wedge itself in. Perfect. So that's in there nice and tight. Now let's grab our Grab our battery tray and stick it in there. Knock out all the crap that's been accumulating in your battery tray. Drop it down into the hole. Got the four bolts for it. And we'll put that in. Okay, we're gonna take the super long extension. I think it's a one foot and 13 millimeter on our 3H ratchet. Go ahead and drive these babies home. My old steering stabilizer was blown out. You could tell because of all the goop that's leaked out on it. And if you pull the rod in and out, it's got some, it's got some air. It'll jump, jump a little bit. But anyways, got a new one of those. Anyways, to reinstall this, get your uh, half inch drive with 18 millimeter socket. Pull out your 18 millimeter wrench. Three H drive extension with a 13 millimeter. You're gonna need the bracket and the three bolts that we pulled out earlier. They're half inch, I mean, they're 13 millimeter. And you're gonna need this nut here. It's also 18 millimeter. Right, I'm gonna start by putting in this bracket. You find them?
my uh, lovely wife has brought me my safety glasses so I don't get schmooed in my eye. All right, we're gonna tighten up this bracket with 13 millimeter. I've started them all by hand. Okay, that bracket's on. Put that side on loosely. Start to pull this side out. millimeter box end on the bolt socket 18 millimeter socket on the other end okay that's tight steering stabilizers in new one let's grab our fairing or whatever you want to call this piece of plastic shield air director whatever it's the last piece we need down here let's grab that put it back and we got these little these little buttons for it so you just push them in the hole and then push the center part in it's in okay those are all back in let's get the hell out from underneath the car All right, and while you've got these black dirty hands full of grease, you should go uh, give the wife a hug. All right, we're done underneath the car. It's uh, okay, we're gonna just drop the battery in there. Let's pull our terminals out of the way. Then we need to put our battery hole down back in. Struggling. Struggling to find the hole here. I swear this never happens. Oh, there we go. What's awesome is that this this replacement line is formed in just such a way that it blocks the battery hold down. Amazing. Battery hold down is eight millimeter. Don't worry about going too crazy on that. The battery's pretty heavy. Oh, there's a lot of gravity holding it down. Put our hot on first. Put them on the terminal. Then squeezing them. Pair of channel locks and then tightening this 10 millimeter bolt. Always put your hot on first and then do your ground second. Okay, guys, we're going down the highway at about 65 miles an hour. The air is blowing at about 44 degrees and it's 104 degrees outside, so it's a 60 degree differential. I'd say the system's working pretty good. Okay guys, sitting at idle with 104 degrees outside. We're getting about 60 degrees out of the vent with the fan speed on number three out of four. But you have to remember too that this is a V10 and it only idles at just over 500 RPMs. So you're not gonna get the coldest air at 500 RPMs, but we're going down the highway, we're getting 42 degrees. So I call it a success. I'll catch you guys a little later. If you found this video to be cool, uh, like and subscribe. Thanks.